So without a doubt, one of the reasons that Python is such a powerful programming language for bioinformatics is to do with all the libraries that are available for it. So Python libraries are essentially just a collection of code that's designed to handle specific types of data. So genomics bioinformatics gives us very specific types of data. So as you can imagine, there are libraries that are kind of uh, designed to handle that type of data. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. The libraries that I've been using um, in my work in bioinformatics. So this video is all about the five Python libraries that I think you should know if you're doing genomics bioinformatics work. So this is not a definitive list by any means. This is more a list of the libraries that I find most useful in my own work. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's other libraries out there which I won't talk about here that are really useful for genomics bioinformatics but these are the ones that I have most experience in and I rely on a lot. So let's get started with NumPy. So NumPy describes itself as a fundamental package for scientific computing in Python, uh, but it's kind of most famous or most used for doing uh, matrix uh, calculations. We're doing matrix calculations and working with arrays. So I'm not going to go into the details of all of that, um, but that's kind of what it's most used for. So I think the main reason I would say you should know NumPy um, for bioinformatics work is to do with just how efficient it is at doing um, sort of certain tasks. So an example of this is working with random numbers, with pseudo random numbers in Python. So Python comes bundled with a a module called random, which generates pseudo random numbers. So this is kind of the best you can do with generating random numbers because you can't actually generate truly random numbers uh, with uh, Python for all sorts of reasons, uh, which don't really matter right now. Uh, but Python does come with this module that helps you do all sorts of stuff. You can generate random numbers, you can select random numbers, you can select random elements and that kind of stuff. Really, really useful. Um, NumPy has a similar module as well. So this random module here in NumPy does basically something very similar to this random module that comes bundled with Python. And the difference is the NumPy module is generally much, much faster than the than the inbuilt one. Um, and this is true for a lot of different uh, methods in NumPy. So where there is an option to use NumPy over any other package, I would generally go with NumPy just because it's usually more efficient. And that efficiency really matters when you're working with really big data sets as you might be doing in genomics. That's a teeny tiny part of what you can do with NumPy and why it might be useful for you in genomics bioinformatics, uh, but it does do a lot more and it's a library that I think is worth, is worth knowing. So if you don't have any experience working with NumPy, they have a beginner's guide uh, right on the webpage here and they show you how to do some of the most basic things with NumPy, including installing it and getting it ready to use in your in your uh, Python scripts and all the kind of different things you can do with, with NumPy. So pandas, much like NumPy, is one of those really, really widely used Python libraries just because of how useful it is and how powerful it is for doing certain certain tasks. So in a nutshell, pandas is essentially um, Python's version of Excel. It is, of course, so much more than that and much more powerful than Excel. But if you have no experience with it, you can think of it as um, as Excel for Python. So its main uh, object that it uses in Python is called a data frame, and that's the equivalent of your uh, Excel sheet, essentially. So Pandas does so much heavy lifting in Python, 
um, that it's hard to kind of uh, narrow down what's the most important thing to talk about. So I will say for absolute beginners who haven't used pandas before and maybe have done uh, really basic Python tutorials, um, if you go into the getting started web page here, and yeah, you can go through all of this, but if you scroll all the way down, there is this cheat sheet here, which is super useful. If you go on that, um, it shows you some of the most uh, useful things or most um, common things you might want to do with pandas. And it also kind of helps you visualize um, what pandas is all about. I think the most important thing on this cheat sheet is right at the top here, which is making tidy data. So if you're not familiar with this concept, this is this is really, really important to have your data in this in this um, in this configuration. And it shows you how to do all sorts of other really cool things with um, with pandas and manipulating data frames in all sorts of ways, uh, dealing with uh, missing values and yeah, all sorts of things that, that make pandas a really powerful uh, Python library and one you should know. So pandas and NumPy are fairly sort of generic libraries, but let's move on to sort of more specialized libraries. So argparse is a really interesting library, especially for, for bioinformatics work, because basically what it does is it makes your uh, Python script more user friendly to the command line. And as you probably know at this point, most of bioinformatics is going to go through the command line at some point. And yeah, I mean, Python is kind of integrated into the command line, at least on Mac OS anyway. But it doesn't mean that your Python scripts will automatically play nice with the command line. And argparse is a is a library designed to make Python scripts more user friendly on the command line. So what do I mean by this? If you've ever run anything on the command line, you would know all about options, which are sort of specified with this notation here where you put where you run your your, your program. So argparse will help you put those options in so that when you put them into the command line, they will actually do something. And you also get some free pieces of code as well without having to do that much. So yeah, you may not necessarily need to use argparse in your Python scripts, um, especially if they're not to be used by anyone else except for you. But if you're planning to share um, Python scripts that do sort of bioinformatics work, then you will definitely have to use argparse basically to allow other people to use options um, in a way that makes sense on the command line. argparse has its own documentation page here and it essentially walks you through how to use it and the kind of things that you can you can do with it which is really cool. Yeah and they give you example code as well which you can copy and modify and see how it works in your own Python scripts. So there really is a Python library called Fuzzy Wuzzy, and it's actually a really, really useful little, yeah, little library. So what Fuzzy Wuzzy does basically is compare, is compare strings. Just having a quick look at this uh, sort of description of uh, Fuzzy Wuzzy, you can see that it compares uh, two strings and then it gives you a value of how closely those two strings are matched. Most of the data that we work with in genomics bioinformatics is text-based, which means we have loads and loads of strings to work with. And that means Fuzzy Wuzzy can be a really, really useful tool uh, for, for specific tasks. I've used Fuzzy Wuzzy to match sequencing strings to, to reads. Uh, so I can pull out specific reads that I'm interested in. It's really good for that. And I think it's worth investing a little bit of time in knowing. It's not a particularly big library, so it wouldn't take you a long time to learn. Um, and it's also just kind of fun to mess around with as well. Great little library that can be really useful uh, for bioinformatics work. And finally is one that I'm using quite a lot lately, and that is PySAM. 
So this is a hugely powerful library for, for genomics, uh, bioinformatics, or using, using Python. As the name kind of suggests, it mostly works with, um, with alignment files, with SAM and BAM files. Um, and it also does a little bit of VCF work as well, which is, uh, which is quite cool. And fundamentally, that's what PySAM does. It just helps you manipulate SAM and BAM files and uh, VCF files and do all sorts of really cool things, cool things with them. So as a quick little example, you can iterate through all the reads within a SAM file and you can do stuff with those reads and then and then put them back which is something that you can't do on the command line as far as I'm aware. So while we're on PySAM, a quick bonus uh, library as well that I think you should know about is BioPython. Um, so BioPython does a decent amount of what PySAM does, but BioPython does a heck of a lot more. So it doesn't just work with alignment files. It also handles fast A files, which are literally just sequence files. You can translate DNA sequences with BioPython, and you can even run BLAST through, through BioPython as well. So if you don't know what BLAST is, it basically just searches how similar uh, sequences are to other species. So I only have it as a bonus library because I'm not personally using it at the moment for anything, but I think it's a useful library to know about, maybe not necessarily learn right away if you don't need it, but good to know that it's out there um, for when whenever you need to use it. So the Python for bioinformatics tutorial that I'm sort of putting together at the moment um, has a lot more detail on PySAM and we get to we get to do some stuff with PySAM. So if that's something you're interested in and learning what you can do with PySAM and kind of and kind of following along with me doing a tutorial with PySAM, then definitely stay tuned because uh, that should be coming soon in the next couple of weeks or so. So that is it. That is my five Python libraries that turned into, into six, including BioPython, that I think you should at least know about um, if you're going to be doing bioinformatics and using Python uh, regularly. So every single one of these libraries have documentation and help pages, which I'm going to link in the description below. This is kind of the main way that I learn about how to use these libraries is to check the documentation pages. In basically every single case, they give you example code. PySAM and BioPython will be in the tutorial that I'm, that I'm making for bioinformatics with Python. So if you want to see that, stay tuned and it is coming in the next couple of weeks. add me on LinkedIn. So um, yeah, I'll put my LinkedIn in the description down below, add me on there. And I generally try to reply to people, but I can't always get to all the messages. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.